can't even begin to imagine how prodigious the universe is. A plethora of stars blink in its shining light. Buried in those stars, there has to be civilization. And according to some, we have been visited by nine. But in this video, we will focus on one civilization. You see 39.17 light years away rests a binary star system in the southern constellation of Reticulum. That's a lot of gas money. We are not alone guys, because there's a planet within that star system, Planet Serpo. Populated by an extraterrestrial race known as Ebens. Now these Ebens are interesting because they traveled light years to visit us. Which tells me that these guys are equipped with advanced technology. Due to that visit, we have manifested an exchange program. An exchange program that led to 12 of our kind to move out there. Now let's dig deep and embrace the strange. Something strange about Project Serpo. Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Roswell, right? But for those who aren't, I'll explain briefly. An alien's craft crashed on Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. It was covered up as a crash weather balloon they were operating at that time. If you're not familiar with that, then you can look it up. It's called Project Mogul. Anyway, ever since then, stories of the crash has been spreading. To this day, people are talking about what they have witnessed at that time. Now, the story is that the crash was the result of two alien craft colliding, killing all of the Ebens but one on the first craft. They didn't find the second one until two years later, where they found six bodies of dead aliens decomposed. The remains were taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force for evaluation. By the way, we named them Eben. It's a term that comes from the acronym EBE or extraterrestrial biological entity. Anyways, they apprehended the survivor. They stand about four foot three, brownish skin with large eyes. Not to be mistaken with the Greys, which are a different civilization of extraterrestrial. Now this live entity established communications with us and provided us with the location of his home planet. He remained alive until 1952. Now this is where things begin to get interesting. You see, before he died, he provided us with a full explanation of the items that we found inside the two crafts. One being a communication device, which we allowed him to use and made contact with his home planet. Where a proposal was made, an exchange program was created, which Planet Serpo agreed to, but arranged to be accomplished 10 years in the future. This program consisted of 12 carefully selected military personnel, 10 men and 2 women. They were trained, vetted, and carefully removed from the military system. 12 skilled in various specialties. They no longer had a name. They were referred to each other by a 3 digit number. It was important to select men from the military due to the nature of this trip. Men with military discipline was needed. It was also preferred that these men were orphans themselves, with no family, no wives. The reason being that they didn't want this project to be spoken about. They didn't want any possibility of it being revealed. Now it took them about 10 months to reach their planet. The men were offered food, but they all agreed that it tasted like paper. So they ate their sea rations they had brought along on the trip. The team commander mentions that he recounts using a small metal container for elimination which the Ebens emptied for them. After a few days they were able and allowed to wander freely around the enormous ship which is said that the ceiling stood at about 100 feet high. Using the alien device the crew touched base with Earth for the entire trip. Prior to reaching Serpo 
one of the team members known as 308 died of pulmonary embolism. Now the team commander accounts the landing vividly. He recalls Ebens waiting for them. Walking down the ramp, seeing a sea of Ebens, he took notice of the largest one and suspecting this large Eben as the leader. He was about a foot taller than the rest. The leader welcomed them and led them to an open arena where they stood on dirt and under a clear blue sky. That's when they took notice of the two suns brightly shining, warming the planet up to 107 degrees. Looking at the land and seeing rolling hills, dirt everywhere. But the brightness of the sun was too much to bear without sunglasses. They were quartered by huts that appeared to be adobe-like, and all their gear was stored in an underground facility. The buildings all had lights and electricity generated by a small box. They saw how advanced their technology was. They observed their tremendous biotechnology. They witnessed their interstellar navigation using antimatter, capable of traveling through wormholes. In 1978, the craft returned, but not all of the men returned with them. Some died, and some decided to stay on the planet. But some interesting stories came back on the craft. Whether you believe it or not, it's not a coincidence that technology has been created rapidly since the Roswell event. We have witnessed an overwhelming manifestation of technology unimagined. Hey, I didn't make up this story. I'm just telling you one that may help connect the dots in this world filled with mysteries.